Folks, do you ever feel like the work is just never done? Why, yes. Yes, I do feel like that. Hey there, Victor family, and welcome to the Wednesday Word, where we're bringing you words of encouragement direct from the Holy Scriptures. As always, I hope you're having a great week. But if you're not, you have come to the right place because nothing is more encouraging than the Word of God. Now, whether it's your nine to five or household chores, taking care of the kids or the grandkids, paying bills, whatever. You know, sometimes it just feels like, you know, it's like you can never get ahead or even catch up. The finish line is in sight and then wham, you know, it's always something. You know, despite the different specific circumstances of each of our situations, we all know that feeling. And in a similar sense, we can compare that feeling to how we feel about ourselves as human beings. There's something in all of us that makes us want to feel like we're acceptable, we're approved, but then we have all these past regrets and mistakes that we've made that weigh on us. And we know that even in the present, we're not living up to who we think we should be or who we know we should be. And we just can't seem to get ourselves where we want. But folks, there is good news. I may not be able to tell you that all your challenges at work or at home or paying bills or in health concerns, that they'll ever completely be done. But praise God that your acceptance and your approval is already done. When you believe in Christ, His righteousness is applied to you. So if you've repented of sin and confessed, it doesn't matter what you've done in the past, and it doesn't matter that you're still not perfect. All that matters is that you have faith in the one who never made a mistake, and he paid the ultimate price for all of us who have. So let's just look at what Christ did, and let's take in how monumental it is. In Matthew chapter 27, after Jesus had been on the cross for some time, and he'd been tortured and suffering for hours, he cried out, Eli, Eli, lema sabachthani, which in Aramaic means, my God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And that statement is difficult for many of us to understand. But Jesus was directly quoting the 22nd Psalm, which describes an innocent sufferer. That's just a, a person who is good and faithful to God, but is suffering immense cruelty and pain anyway. Some Christians believe that the 22nd Psalm was a direct prophecy of the crucifixion, while others believe that the gospel writers simply used it to show how Jesus was the ultimate example of the innocent sufferer that the Psalms described. Now, folks, let me clear up that debate right now with a very firm, I don't know. But either way, the indisputable truth is Jesus came to do a work for our salvation. And that work is finished. You see, we have to remember that Jesus didn't only come to suffer on the cross. He didn't only come to do miracles. He didn't only come to teach truth to disciples. Yes, of course, Jesus came to do all those things. But his entire life, from his first day on earth till the very last, was a work, a work for our atonement. Jesus lived the perfect life because we could not. He resisted Satan and all human temptation. He fulfilled all of the law for us, taught the disciples, commanded them what to do. He created the church to testify for his name. And then he took on all of our sin unto himself. In fact, the Bible says that Jesus became sin to pay the price that we never could pay. And in taking that sin upon himself for a time, he suffered separation from the Father, essentially what we would call damnation. He endured what we deserved. It was so much more than just the physical pain of the crucifixion, which was terrible itself. But even through that terrible ordeal, Jesus was thoroughly focused on the work that he was completing for us. And when he had suffered for many hours of torture and hanging nailed to the cross, he said to those watching, I thirst. And John tells us in the 19th chapter of his gospel, 
A jar full of sour wine stood there. So they put a sponge full of the sour wine on a hyssop branch and held it to his mouth. And when Jesus had received the sour wine, he said, quote, It is finished. And he bowed his head and gave up his spirit. It is finished. And that is so important for us to know. Now, if you've been at Victor recently, you've heard Pastor Ken reminding us that we need to let go of our former sins. We need to stop fighting our past selves. And, because if we're trying to live up to the righteousness that God demands, folks, we're never going to make it. It's, it's just a fruitless endeavor. But you know what? When we look to the cross and we remember and know what Jesus did, that he did the work and that he paid the price for us, and that that work is finished, we can rejoice in his grace and we can let the fruit of the Spirit flow out of us. No, I can't promise you that your daily tasks and obligations won't keep piling up. Actually, I probably can promise you that that type of work won't end until you pass on. But I know that you will see those things pale in comparison to the eternal work that Christ has already finished for us. Dear Lord, thank you so much for your grace that allows us to rest peacefully in the knowledge that you have done the work that we could not, that you made the sacrifice and you lived the perfect life that we never could and you did it for us. Thank you for the work that you have finished. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Take care, Victor family. I hope you have a wonderful week.